Through the centuries, to explore space was an impossible fantasy. Then two rival scientists became locked in a race to realize that dream. Their struggle would make history. Sergei Koryolov was released from prison to become chief designer of the Soviet space program. He launched the world's first satellite. It's just been announced that the Russians have put a satellite into space. <laughs> and Yuri Gagarin, the first man into space. Despite all the success, Koryolov's identity was a closely guarded state secret. These pictures coming live from Moscow. In America, his rival, Werner von Braun, was struggling to catch up. The Soviets may be ready to go as soon as November. We can't waste time trucking this capsule from state to state while the Reds are orbiting the Earth. And you prefer we kill an astronaut? Now, with the launch of America's first astronaut, Von Braun is closing the gap. And with the creation of NASA, go, baby, go. the moon is in his sights. The eyes of the world now look into space. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. The year is now 1964. Come on, come on. Let's get on with it. Sergei Koryolov's role as chief designer is a well-kept secret in the Soviet Union. While everything done by his rival in America is public knowledge. Project Apollo. Destination move. What rocket will take these men and futuristic Apollo craft to their destination? Let's hear about its design from the world-famous rocket designer, Dr. Werner von Braun. At over 350 feet long, the Saturn V will be a giant among rockets. Its weight, equivalent to a light battle cruiser, will be lifted into the air by a first stage of five engines producing over seven and a half million pounds of thrust, enough to launch over 1,500 Sputniks into orbit. <laughs> the space age has truly arrived. Space exploration is necessary for a dynamic America and essential for the preservation of peace. Both men have dreamed of going to the moon for over 30 years. But Koryolov can't win backing for his lunar rocket. The money they must have. We can't even get our plans for a lunar mission approved, never mind the funds. That von Braun is such a lucky devil. First the Nazis, then the American government. You may laugh for silly, but he will fly his battle cruiser. Our M1 is unlikely to even lift off their design board. But the Politburo say they want lunar mission. They know we must have a powerful booster like the N1 or the Saturn if we're to do it. Do they? Do they, really, for silly? Or do they expect us to pull it out of the bag like we always do? Without a rocket as powerful as the Saturn, we will lose. The Saturn's engines work on the same basic principle as all rocket engines, of which this is an example. The crucial part of the design is the injector plate, like a giant shower head spraying fuel into the combustion chamber where it ignites. It's a process that has to be absolutely precise or the engine fails. Allow me to give you an example. Imagine that at thousands of times the ferocity with fuel delivered at a rate sufficient to fill a family-sized swimming pool every 10 seconds. That's what we have to achieve on the F1. The most powerful rocket engine ever built. Fail, and we don't go to the moon.
So we are testing engine number 008 with injected plate F367. Senior engineer Paul Kassenholz has been testing the engine for the past two years. Uh, yes, sir, that's uh, 008 and uh, plate F367. But there are problems getting the ambitious design to work at all. Everyone clear the stand? Looks like we're about ready. Trying to get to the black house. Inside the engine, the injector plate is the most critical part of the design. It mixes the liquid fuels together through thousands of tiny holes. Tens of thousands of gallons of liquid oxygen and kerosene burn. The gases expand to create intense pressure. The smallest upset to this smooth mix will lead to a rocket designer's worst nightmare. Combustion instability. All it takes is the slightest thing. Keep me posted on modifications for the next test. Von Braun needs five of these engines perfectly synchronized just to lift his Saturn off the ground. It's never going to work at that size. Well, it'll have to, or he sure as hell isn't going to the moon. Yeah. How many times have you tried this? He'll never make peace with you because he's jealous and always has been. I know, but I need him, and he knows it. His engines launch Gagarin, Sputnik. He knows launching the N1 will be no different. The Politburo still wouldn't fund Koryolov's lunar rocket, the N1. To help persuade them, he and his wife Nina hope to enlist the help of the Soviet's leading rocket engine designer, Valentin Glushko, a man who has long coveted Koryolov's success. I have made my position completely clear to the Central Committee and to the Politburo. My answer is no, unless you change fuels, which you won't. So there's the end of the discussion. You know I can't agree to that. Anyway, to abandon liquid oxygen now would kill the N1. We don't have time. You have seen Von Braun's Saturn. He uses oxygen. I didn't see it fly. Are we going to the moon or not? Not on liquid oxygen using large engines. A schoolboy can tell you the problems you will get with combustion instability. This is not about fuel, is it, Valentin? This is about you and me. I know how you talk behind my back, how you poisoned my relations with Khrushchev. I know you do the same with the Politburo and Brezhnev. Get out. You cannot stand it when I succeed. You'll do anything to destroy my chances. Leave, now! With pleasure, Valentin Petrovich. If you don't want the job, I will get by without you. That could have gone better. I thought you said the Politburo will never agree to funds if you don't have Grushko. I'll manage. I have another man in mind. Sergei, what happened? I'm all right. I'm all right. Let's Take just get the hell out of here. Please. Take us straight home. With the entire moonshot resting on the success of his engines, von Braun takes a radical step. A small bomb is planted in the engine to deliberately trigger instability. Stand by for engine test. Turbo bump 
sequence initiated. If the engine copes with the shock waves caused by the bomb, he'll know he's solved it. Firing charge, mark. This failure is turning public opinion against Von Braun. How do you answer those who say you're using the tax dollars of the poor to fatten the rich corporations? Look, we don't spend the money on the moon. We spend it here in the United States, creating jobs and new products. Gather round while I sing you a Werner Von Braun, a man whose allegiance is ruled by expedience. Call him a Nazi, he won't even frown. A Nazi schmazi, says Werner Von Braun. Don't say that he's hypocritical. Say rather that he's apolitical. Once the rockets are up, who cares where they come down? That's not my department, says Werner Von Braun. Components are redesigned and then test fired at a cost of tens of millions of dollars until Von Braun at last gets word of a breakthrough. Excellent, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. So, what was the problem? Well, frankly, sir, uh, I still don't know. But it has been resolved. Well, we found a design of injector plate that cures the instability. I just don't know what caused it in the first place. Anyway, we now have an engine that runs, so uh, the F-1 can go operational. But it could reoccur. He has to build the engines, with no guarantee the problem is solved. Why the rush? The Russians appear to be doing nothing. Don't be fooled. The Soviets understand the significance of conquering space. They want to beat us to the moon. And they may surprise us any day now. This is Diamond One. I'm ready to go out. Just as von Braun fears, Koryolov is ready with another historic first. Soviet cosmonaut Alexei Leonov becomes the first man to walk in space. Diamond one calling dog. Everything is going well. Below me, I can see clouds. See the Caucasus. <laughs> I can see the Caucasus below me. Koryanov hopes that the spacewalk's impact will help persuade the Politburo to fund his plans for a lunar mission. The suit is performing well. Island 1, this is Dawn. You have achieved your objectives. Return to the spacecraft. Hell, I can't get back to the spacecraft. Air pressure in my suit is increasing. I can barely move my fingers in my gloves. I can throw myself back to the airlock. <laughs> Leonov's suit is so inflated, he will never fit back through the airlock. Alexei, try using the release valve to manually vent air from the suit. <laughs> he struggles for 12 minutes at the airlock. With one last push, he finally manages to climb back into the spacecraft. Today, the Soviet Union announced successful completion of the first walk in space. Pilot cosmonaut Lieutenant Colonel Alexei Arkhipovich Leonov spent 23 minutes and 41 seconds outside his spacecraft. The Politburo never reveal how close the mission came to disaster. 
von Braun can only assume the Soviets are ahead. And worse still, hostilities are escalating in Vietnam. America is torn apart as the protest movement grows. Von Braun is worried about losing public support for the moonshot. But watching from Russia, Koryalov is acutely aware of the funds at his rival's disposal. The industrial might of America is now focused on NASA's lunar program. In assembly buildings across the country, the gigantic Saturn V is taking shape. In high altitude tests, astronauts are training for each step of a moon mission. In 1965 alone, NASA has been allocated a further $5 billion to spearhead its conquest of space. This is it. I have it. We have approved for a circumlunar flight on the 50th anniversary of the revolution and a manned landing within three years. Now, we can move the N1 into full production. Although they have allocated half the funds we asked for. At last, Koryalov has the go ahead to compete directly with the American moon mission but with only a fraction of the money. He soon finds a replacement for Glushko to design his new rocket engines, Nikolai Kuznetsov. How many engines are you proposing for the first stage? First stage? 24. 24? We we'll need 24 to deliver enough thrust. Nikolai, the American Saturn has five. Mm -hmm. How are we going to control 24 engines? We'll find a way. It's a brilliant design, which I am pleased to say will make Glushko spit. Oh, how are we going to test a stage of 24 engines? When we launch. Vasily, there's no money. And besides, it would take three years to build a test stand large enough. While his lunar rocket is under construction, Koryalov invites the cosmonauts to see a mock-up of the capsule that will take them to the moon, the Soyuz. It weighs six and a half thousand kilos and can carry three cosmonauts. Leonov, Gagarin and Komarov are his top candidates. The ship has solar panels for extra power, but the most important feature is its maneuverability. Unlike our old Vostok, it can be piloted in space. It can dock with other ships. So it could link and detach to another craft which descends to the moon. Vladimir, take a look. You might be the first to fly. A lot more space than the Vostok. Twice the size. <laughs> well, <laughs> there was some dispute about that. A young designer wanted to make it so small. I drew a chalk circle around him the size he proposed and made him stand in it. We continued our debate. He soon agreed to make the capsule bigger. <laughs> Sergei Pavlovich, are you all right? I'm fine. Don't fuss. Don't fuss. Now. Look. After leaving the cosmonauts, Koryalov collapses with severe heart pains. Doctors order him to take rest. His deputy of 20 years, Vasily Mishin, takes over while he's away. Yes, Vasily, you spoke to the minister. Yes. I met him. He says no further funds can be released until we submit a report. Well, of course he'd say that. What do you expect? It's okay. I can't take this. 
this job is not for me. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to ask to stand up. Please, please, Vazia, calm down. You can handle it. Just tell them to continue with the engine tests. I'll deal with this when I get back. To add to the strain, NASA has developed a new spacecraft called Gemini and is launching manned missions almost every two months. They carry out spacewalks, test maneuvers for space docking, and set a two-week endurance record in orbit, an obvious prelude to their Apollo moon missions. Here. You ought to take a look at this. Koryolov has nothing ready to match this. They are leaving us behind. Koryolov is taken in for exploratory surgery. A tumor is discovered. Koryolov's weak heart fails. A result of the physical hardship endured during his imprisonment in the Gulag. After 20 years of anonymity, the Soviet Premier, Leonid Brezhnev, decides to reveal the genius behind the Soviet space program. His name revealed to the world, the man who had once been sent to the Gulag now has a full state funeral in Red Square. A hero of the Soviet people at last. Even his ashes are preserved in the Kremlin wall. Werner von Braun at last discovers the identity of his greatest rival. This was just one man. How will they do without him? At the Cape, von Braun is soaring ahead. Inside the largest building ever constructed, his giant lunar rocket, the Saturn V, is being assembled. NASA is almost ready for the start of the Apollo missions. On the 27th day of January, 1967, astronauts Gus Grissom, Ed White and Roger Chaffee are sealed inside the new Apollo capsule for a final run-through on the ground. What happens next throws the moon program into crisis. Capcom, I do not read you. Please repeat. Apollo 1, this is Capcom. A spark suddenly turns the capsule into an inferno. The death of the three astronauts stuns America. The spark ignited the capsule's pure oxygen atmosphere. 
NASA has to go back and painstakingly rework their Apollo capsule from scratch. Just three months later, the Soviets are ready to test their equivalent of the Apollo capsule, the Soyuz. Once in orbit, the cosmonaut Vladimir Komarov is in trouble. A solar panel fails to open and the craft is starved of power. The panel's not moving. None of these instruments work. We should attempt an immediate re-entry. We keep the power demands down to a minute. Then... Vasily Mishin, now in charge of the Soviet space program, faces the first big test of his leadership. Only absolutely essential systems to be left on, all others to be switched off. By the 13th orbit, the automatic re-entry systems also fail. Komarov's chances of survival are slim. His only hope, to pilot the stricken craft home himself. Convinced it's an impossible task, Komarov's wife is called in to say goodbye. Against all the odds, Komarov brilliantly guided the tumbling Soyuz through the Earth's atmosphere. But as both his main and backup parachutes failed, he perished. Why are we having these failures? I'll tell you why. Poor work, bad practices, a lazy approach. Everybody has an excuse. This doesn't function. I can't get this made. Excuses, excuses that cover us. Shoddy, useless work. Mission increasingly relies on alcohol to deal with the pressure. It has been my duty to inform the State Commission. Inform them that this third failure means it is now not possible to celebrate the glorious 50th anniversary of the Bolshevik Revolution with a manned flight! The cosmonauts complain about mission to the Soviet leadership, citing his failings as impatience, rudeness, and poor knowledge. But nothing is done. Two months later, Gagarin himself dies, killed in a flying accident. Gagarin's death, so soon after Koryolovs, is a further blow to the morale of the Soviet space program, which now falters on the brink of collapse. In America, Von Braun is ready for a test flight of his Saturn V rocket, an unmanned dress rehearsal for the real thing. Standing 36 stories high, it weighs more than a battle cruiser, the greatest weight ever lifted off the ground. It takes 450 staff to control the countdown. Von Braun's Saturn V is to carry the unmanned Apollo capsule into orbit. For safety, the press are held behind a three and a half mile exclusion zone. For Von Braun, Everything hinges on the reliability of his engines. 10, 9, ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1.
the exception of a nuclear bomb blast, the Saturn V is the loudest man-made object ever built. It registers on earthquake sensors across America. For 125 seconds, the flight is flawless. Flight booster. Go. We're losing thrust. Roger that. Uh, we have a problem. We have Pogo plus minus 10 Gs. Pogo. Powerful vibrations down the length of the rocket. If they become violent enough, they'll cause the rocket to break up. Combustion instability. Frequency? Five to six cycles per second. Wait, 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 it's over. Stage one separated. Engine out. Which? Engine two. Another engine out. Flight booster. Oh my god. Go. We've got engines two and three out. Oh, she's falling. Booster, it's your action. You go for abort? Are you go for abort? Uh, wait, wait. We still have good control at this time. Oh. Roger that. Although the Saturn limps into orbit, von Braun cannot risk a man flight until the engine problems are fixed. The Soviets also have engine problems. Their new designer, Nikolai Kuznetsov, has been forced to add extra engines to provide more thrust. The first stage now has 30. Bart Kuznetsov faces criticism from Koryalov's old adversary, Valentin Glushko. During the static firing of the NK-15, there was a partial blowout of the combustion chamber. Uh, comrades, uh, we need not go any further. At this stage, uh, I wish to propose redesigning the N-1. I have plans that would utilize our proven RD-235 engine. Ignoring Glushko's opposition, Koryanov's dream rocket, the N-1, makes a fleeting appearance on the pad. But engineers find cracks in its outer casing. Werner. Werner. We've had reports reports from the CIA that the Russians are getting close to a manned circumlunar flight, maybe by the end of the year. With what? These are classified satellite shots of their launch pad at Tiratam. They show a Saturn-sized rocket. We feel that the uh, next Saturn V Apollo launch, Apollo 8, should take a crew around the moon. Well, it's insane. We won't have test flown a Saturn since we had the engine failure and Pogo problem. Yeah, I know, but we can't take the chance that they do it first. Whoever sends men around the moon will have as good as won the race. It will be a massive propaganda victory. That's some proposition to commit human life. Well, maybe if we'd taken a little more risk before, we would have got an American up there first. Known to von Braun, without Sergei Koryalov, the Soviets are floundering. Why wasn't I told? Why wasn't I told? What's wrong? We lost pressure. The peroxide temperature is low, minus five. Where's your Come on. Let's go. I'm 
Not going anywhere. With the cosmonauts losing faith in mission, they appeal to the Politburo for a manned flight around the moon in early December. They are prepared to gamble their own lives to beat the Americans. But the cosmonauts' request is denied. send three astronauts to fly around the moon for the first time. T plus 155 seconds, first stage has separated. The Saturn hasn't flown since the engine and pogo problems. Apollo, you're looking good. Your trajectory and guidance are go. Trust is fine. Engines are fine. Once the rocket stages drop away, a critical step is TLI, translunar injection. The final engine burn to set them on a course for the moon. Apollo 8, you're go for TLI. Roger, understand. We are go for TLI. <laughs> Commander Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders have to fly 234,000 miles out into space and navigate for the first time into the moon's orbit. On Christmas Eve, the crew of Apollo 8 become the first human beings to look down on the lunar surface. As they disappear behind the moon, all radio contact is lost. If they fail to lock into the moon's orbit, they will fly on, forever lost in space. Apollo 8, come in. Apollo 8, this is Houston. Apollo 8. Apollo 8, this is Houston. Suddenly, as they emerge from the far side of the moon, a sight unseen by human eye. The rising Earth, shining over the moon's bleak surface. The crew of Apollo 8 came within 70 miles of the moon's surface. The next step is to actually land a man on the moon. But just 17 days before the American moon mission, Mission is ready for an unmanned launch of his lunar rocket. Well, now we get to see who is right. To succeed, Kuznetsov's 30 engines must all fire together.
torn apart with almost the force of a nuclear bomb, it is the most powerful explosion in the history of rocketry. Caused by a single bolt sucked into a fuel pump, the explosion scatters pieces of debris over 10 kilometers. The failure is a state secret for 20 years. The disaster effectively ends the career of Vasily Mission. In America, one last detail before the moon landing, choosing the flag. To ensure no one manufacturer can profit by claiming it's their flag on the moon, a NASA secretary makes a random selection. On the 16th of July, Commander Neil Armstrong, Edwin Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, the crew of Apollo 11, make their way out to the pad. One million people gather at the Cape to see them off. Across the world, half a billion are watching. Saturn's main engines have to fire for 150 seconds to take the crew safely into orbit. Twenty-five years have passed since von Braun brought his rocket technology to America. Now he is about to realize his long-held dream, to land a man on the moon. Roger, how does it look? Hey, I'm going to the moon. Roger. Michael Collins orbits the moon in the command module. We're go, same time, we're go. As Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin head for the lunar surface. Eagle looking great. 35 degrees, 750, coming down to 23. 
But while struggling to find a landing site, the fuel runs dangerously low. Soviet probe, sent in a last-ditch effort to steal some glory, overshoots their landing site. It crashes in the appropriately named Sea of Crises. Von Braun will mastermind another five successful manned missions to the moon. His greater vision of a base on the moon and manned flights to other planets is yet to be fulfilled. <laughs> 